Guys, AMD, Google, and Chipotle are all reporting after hours. We're going to cover Google first. Google was expected to bring in $86.3 billion in revenue. Guys, they brought in $88.3 billion, $1.84 in profit. They brought in $2.12 in profit. Their cloud computing revenue was $11.35 billion they crushed. I want to remind everybody, on our main channel, when Google was in the low 80s. Everybody said we need to fire the CEO, changes to advertising. This is the start of the end for Google. Really? Well, that's interesting. They're up 4% after hours, up $7. Let's go pull up investor relations for Google. Let's go look at their Q3 earnings release directly from the company. Consolidated alphabet revenues increased 15%. 15%, so much for being dead. Google service revenues increased 13% to 76.5, led by strength across Google search and other Google subscriptions, platform devices, and YouTube ads. Guys, Google owns the top two search engines on the world. Google.com and the very channel you're watching us on right now, YouTube.com. This is a money-making machine. Net income increased 34%. Guys, this is a company that's doing three hundred some billion dollars in revenue, and they were able to increase their net income by thirty four percent and EPS by thirty seven percent, probably because they bought back some shares. Okay, the momentum across the company is extraordinary. Our commitment to innovation, as well as our long term focus and investment in AI, we finally heard it, are paying off with the consumers and partners. Partners benefiting from our AI tools. They said it again. So that is, the, that is what the CEO said. Let's do some more breakdown here. Revenues overall, $76.7 billion to $88.268. Operating income up 32%. Other income expenses. Guys, they went from a loss to a positive. That's great. Net income, 19.7 to 26.3. EPS from $1.55 to $2.12. Oh my gosh. My biggest regret not buying Google in the low 80s. And I knew back then it was the right price. And I was, this is the changes I've made personally. Because I realized that I was thinking, oh, this is going to be another bear market. It's going to be big. Let me get, this is what I have to learn. Just buy a stock when it makes sense. Mo bought it at 140. And it's currently at up 4% to 178. Not an all-time high though. All-time high of 193 just three months ago. I mean, this is an incredible business, guys. Very low debt, practically zero debt. It's just about buying at the right price. What's the right price? Well, that's what we're trying to learn here. It's a high return on invested capital business. They put money in their business, they make a ton more. It's a moat. How do you compete with Google search? How do you compete with YouTube? This is an incredible, incredible company. And I want to emphasize that you need to pay a premium for incredible businesses. What's the premium? That's what makes it so hard. We don't know. What's the right premium? Warren Buffett bought Coke at 30 times earnings, and he still made 11.5% return on his money over the last 35 years. That's pretty incredible, 37 years. That's pretty incredible. Google is definitely a premium company that deserves it. Let's go check out Chipotle. 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 They were expecting $2.8 billion in revenue. They reported exactly $2.8 billion. $0.25 cents EPS reported $0.28. Cents. They, beat on, they matched on revenue, beat on earnings. And look at this, down 7%. Down 7%. Wow. So, match on revenue, beat on earnings. Let's go see what their earnings release had to say about this. Total revenue increased 13%. Comparable restaurant sales, 6%. That means restaurants that have been open for 12, 18 months, whatever their number is, are up 6%. That's incredible. Operating margin increased from 16% to 16.9. That's a big difference, guys. That's a very big difference. Almost 6% increase there. Restaurant level operating margin was a decrease though. EPS, guys, EPS increased 21.7%. And it's down now 7% after hours. With a 21% increase in EPS, adjusted EPS up 17%. Opened 86 new company operated stores with 73 locations, including a Chipotle. That Chip I've never been to a Chipotle. I love Chipotle. Have you been to Chipotle? Oh, wow. So 
Tim, our CEO here, was just in Hartsville last week, and you went to there. They had a Chipotle. Was it was it efficient? Yeah, it, no. Oh, he saw it. He didn't use it. Listen, I'm. I will say the biggest beef I've had with Chipotle, and we did a video about this on our main channel where we actually brought Chipotle orders from all over the country. The same order, we weighed it, we did it all. And it was quite the wide disparity. I think that's a big issue that Chipotle has, and I don't wonder how the Chipotle lane would do. So I wonder why, are they guiding poorly? Why is the stock down so much? So a slight miss on revenue, even though it was 2.8 to 2.8, maybe it was 10 or 15 million off. And I guess they were expecting comparable store sales to be up higher than 6%. That's what happens sometimes, guys. People miss on small things. And their long-term target is to reach 7,000 stores. I think they have about 3,500 right now. We have to verify that. So I look at this guy's going, great examples here. You have a company like Chipotle, which is down 7%, even though every metric is up. Why? Because they missed what the analysts were expecting. Who the hell cares? Guys, it's a great business. It's probably going to get better. Not going to lie, though. I do think the quality has decreased in the last few years, and that does bother me. But that's an easy turnaround. And what percentage of their business is now done online? That's probably the interesting part. So... Digital sales represented 34% of total food and beverage revenue. I'm actually surprised. I thought it'd be higher than that. That's incredible. Food, beverage, and packaging costs in the third quarter were 30.6%, an increase from 29.7% in the third quarter. Thank you, inflation, I guess. So guys, um, you sit here and you look at these things and you think, is it a bad company? Is it a good company? Yes, Google beat on both. Chipotle matched on revenue, beat on profit, and yet it's still down. It's a roll of dice. We don't know what's going to happen. Your job is to find great companies. And when, when earnings results hit and punishes the company, look at it as an opportunity to buy if it makes sense to buy. Don't sit there and think you're justified in your investment thesis because they beat on revenue, beat on profit. That should never be your assessment. Now, has AMD re reported already? Yes. AMD just reported expected $6.7 in revenue, brought in $6.8 billion, expected $0.92 cents in profit, matched that down 5.8%. So we have two companies that missed. Now, guys, I want to show you guys something. This is the poll I put out yesterday on my, on my Twitter. And by the way, follow me on Twitter, at EMPaulG. I'm very active on there. I love doing polls. Who do you think will perform best after the report tomorrow? PayPal, Chipotle, AMD, Google. Well, guys, these three went down. Google is the winner here, but we had 40% of our votes were for PayPal. Um, so you look at this thinking... Guys, it's a crapshoot, but they were right. Third of the people were right. Google did the best, and they soared on it. Even though AMD, everybody beat on EPS or matched. Everyone beat on revenue or matched. So nobody missed on anything, and yet, and yet the stocks are down. Three of the stocks are down. That's what's incredible. That's what's insane about the markets. That's why it's so emotional. And what we're trying to teach here is the process of taking out all the noise and being an astute investor who removes as much emotion as possible and says, all three of these companies we did today, PayPal, AMD, Google, Chipotle. I asked a question. Do you think each one of these will be around for 20 or 30 years? I think so. Two, if they're around 20 or 30 years from now, is their revenue and profit going to be higher or lower than today? Probably higher. So the question is, what's the right price to pay today to get a good return on your money. If you pay what they're worth today and their profit goes up 1,000% in the next 20 years, the stock is likely, likely going to be up 1,000%. It's that simple. Now, in that time frame, you're going to see the stock going like this. And you've got to be emotionally strong to not think you're overly right because it's up or wrong because it's down. That's what makes investing hard. That's what we talk about in this channel. It's about taking these ideas and translating it into stocks, real estate, any sort of life money issues, pulling as much emotion out of that. It's the hardest part about investing. So if you like what I'm saying here, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. We do videos three or four a week. We talk about earnings reactions, market reactions, et cetera. But I look at this thinking to myself, great results from four great companies today and three of them down big. Isn't that incredible? And guys, if you want to be better, about your emotions, the best thing to do is surround yourself with like-minded people. Get yourself in front of people and around people who think that way and who, want, who are where you want to be. If you want to be good emotionally, find emotionally solid investors. If you want to be smarter with money, find smart people with money. Best place to do that, our community. Our community has thousands of people talking every day. It's got all these tools to help make your decisions. More importantly, when things are rocky, this will be the place where everybody 
loves red days and everybody will be happy and you'll change your mindset. So go check it out, everythingmoney.com slash sign up. Click the link in the description below. It's a $7 trial for seven days. I guarantee it'll be one of the best investments you ever make because as Warren Buffett says, the number one place to invest is in yourself. This is an investment in yourself. Thank you very much for your time, guys.